Hello. I wanted to share a quick story of something that happened to me this morning and to explain a little bit more about how stain in question works. So if you haven't heard of this idea before, stain in question is this idea of asking questions to create possibilities, to get you out of conclusion and to magnif magnetize things with more ease to your life. So I'll just explain the situation. So I was on a walk, my typical walk, and I'm listening to a podcast, grooving. All of a sudden, this huge dog comes alongside me. I'm like, what? And it's just walking with me. I'm like, hey, okay, what's going on? No collar, nothing, no leash, no owner. Now I'm on a street or a neighborhood where the cars go pretty fast, like 45 miles an hour. And he seems like a younger dog, excitable, kind of darting in and out of the streets. Oh my God. Um, so I was immediately going to like, oh, please don't go on the street kind of thing. Not in question. And so first thing that I want to illuminate is an energy that was required for me to be potent. So he was starting to, you know, dart into the street and I said, hey, stop. And he actually listened. He came back to me, curled up, rolled on his belly and like was very much <laughs> receptive to me, giving him some love. And I just thought that was interesting because you know, I'm, I'm taking this on a side tangent here a little bit, so bear with me. Um, because sometimes people get confused about this idea of anger and potency. And potency is where you can be intense for a moment and then back to relaxed, right? So I had an intensity to kind of snap him out of his dog brain and into present moment to pay attention to me, to keep him safe, right? And then I was back to chill. That's different than when we have an anger outburst and it kind of keeps our body in this dysregulated state for a long period of time. Side tangent. So back to the question part. Now, I was going into, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to find his, his owner and what would I do? And I was going into the what ifs and the unhelpful questions first. Now, although they might sound like questions, they're actually statements with question marks attached because really I had already come to conclusion that, oh, this wasn't a good situation and you know maybe it's not gonna turn out well and oh my gosh, what if he gets hit by a car? Like all the what if catastrophizing things. And I was like, Janine, you know better. So I just took a pause and took a moment while he was like sniffing around me and started to ask, okay, what else is possible here? What's gonna create the greatest? what would it take to find his owner with total ease? And I just sat with that for a second. And this was after I had, you know, seen some gardeners and asked them, hey, do you know if he got outside? And they, they said, I don't know. Um, and so I'd already kind of done the kind of knee jerk reactions. So I had to just pause because then there was no one else around, just cars kind of flying by. And so once I started to get into those questions, then I thought, okay, let's Let's use our awareness to what else is possible, to what could create better, more. Um, and so as I was on the street, then I asked myself, okay, which direction is gonna create the greatest here? I could go right, I could go left. Right, right feels lighter. I don't know why, I'm gonna follow it. It's back towards my way home, although I thought he was coming from the left, I'm like, let's go right. So I go right and I'm still with the idea of, well, is it his home is this direction or what else is gonna contribute to keeping this dog safe? And funny enough, I ran into a neighbor who I've seen casually before with some two little dogs. And I was kind of like, I don't know what to do here. You know, no collar, no, you know, I live in an apartment and I have my own dog, I'm not really sure. And, then he was coming up with ideas of, hey, why don't we post it on um, next door or something? I was like, yeah, okay, cool, I can do that. And then he's like going into his house and I'm like, I, what else is possible? Kind of just still staying in that question. And the natural pull of my energy had him say, hey, oh, wait, do you, do you not have the app? I can post it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that'd be so great. I, I don't have the app, I'm not familiar. I mean, I'm happy to download it and Thank you for offering. And he's like, you know what? Why don't I put them in my backyard? I'm gonna put my two little dogs inside and have the dog in the backyard so he won't get hit by a car. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you for offering that. So 
I offer that example in the sense that if I was looking at really more specific questions of, well, I need to find his home or where does he belong or where am I going to find the owner or this is terrible and going into that, the conclusions, that goes into contraction energy and doesn't have me seeking more or magnetizing possibilities. Because if our point of view creates our reality or what I've already decided creates my reality, then if I've decided that this is a terrible situation, that is what will show up. Versus staying in open-ended questions, what else is possible here? Who else could contribute to this situation? What would it take to get this resolved with total ease? Keep the dog safe. I could have not have planned to run into a neighbor that could be such a contribution to the process. So I hope that's helpful in clarifying what else is possible with questions.